she most certainly will never be forgotten. As mourners all over the world continue to honor Diana with touching memorials, Prince Harry and his brother William are marking the somber occasion privately. The Duke of Cambridge, along with Kate and their three children, are reportedly at their cottage in Windsor, England. And based on what Harry recently shared, he's celebrating their mother at home in Montecito, California. I want it to be a day to share the spirit of my mum with my family, with my children who I wish could have met her. Every day, I hope to do her proud. Diana's brother, Earl Spencer, led social media tributes with a moving photograph of a half-mast flag at Althorpe, her childhood home and final resting place. In Paris, above the underpass where Diana was tragically killed, people who have been touched by the princess came out to pay their respects. I said to my husband, I've had this most awful dream, Lady Diana's passed away. And fans came out in droves to the gates at Kensington Palace to leave mementos. It transports you back 25 years. And instead of being 25 years, it's like yesterday. I think she's someone who needs to be remembered forever. And she holds a place in so many people's hearts. Diana was just 36 years old when she died. She'd be 61 now. And her death is one of those moments where you always remember where you were when you found out the shocking news. We've all heard so much about the tragedy over the past 25 years, and now one of those closest to Diana is sharing deeply personal memories from that day. I took hold of her hand and said, you can wake up now, wake up. And um, of course she didn't wake up. Paul Burrell was Diana's personal butler and close confidant. He rushed to be by her side after the accident, despite the fact that by then she had already passed. I'm on the flight to Paris and thinking I have to get to her as soon as I can because she's still there. She's waiting. She's waiting for me. Breaking news coverage. Princess Diana is seriously injured and two other people have died following a car crash in Paris. Diana and her boyfriend Dodi Al-Fayed had been dining at the Ritz Hotel in Paris just after midnight. They left for Dodi's apartment off the Champs-Élysées, but they would never make it. As soon as they left the Ritz, Diana and Dodi were followed by the relentless paparazzi. Their driver lost control of the car, crashing into the 13th pillar of a tunnel. The world has lost uh, Princess Diana at age 36. It was later determined the driver was speeding while under the influence of alcohol. Diana was still alive when she was taken to the hospital. She died at 4.53 in the morning. I think I was probably the last person to see her face when she was placed into her English oak coffin and I'd taken some clothes with me so she was dressed with dignity. No shroud for my princess. Prince William was just 15 at the time. Prince Harry was 12. They were at the Queen's estate in Scotland when their father, Prince Charles, had to break the horrible news. William and Harry returned to London and took in the massive memorial outside their mother's home in Kensington Palace. Inside, they were greeted by Paul. When he came back to Kensington Palace, William stood there, shook my hand. Harry ran towards me, hugged me, cried, soaked my shirt wet with tears. I said to him, come on, let's go for a little walk around. I think you should take something which was your mummy's. Give you comfort. He said, what can I take? I said, you can take anything you want, anything. So Harry took a hairbrush with his mother's hair still in it. It's just heartbreaking. And of course, one of the most haunting images from Diana's funeral was young William and Harry <sighs> walking behind their mother's coffin. Prince Harry has since revealed that he felt outside of his body doing that and doing what was expected of him. The boys were very close to their mother, and now we're going to look back at that bond. She wanted to make sure that they were never in any doubt about her unconditional love for them. Patrick Jeffson was Diana's personal private secretary and witnessed her hands-on approach to parenting, something that was unusual amongst royal families at the time. She was very tactile, very demonstrative in her affection, maybe because she was conscious that the traditional Windsor way of bringing up children was more reserved. And though Diana wanted a normal childhood for her boys, she did prepare William for the public life that was ahead of him, a second in line to the throne. 
I remember when Prince William did his first, what we call a walkabout. I remember Diana took him to one side and said, you're gonna meet a lot of people today and you can only spend 30 seconds maybe with each of them. But remember that is going to be a lifetime's memory for every person you meet. And I remember on the plane back to London, Diana said to me, you know, Patrick, it's funny. My children are at an age when parents are advised to tell their children, you mustn't talk to strangers. I have to tell my children, you've got to talk to strangers. You're going to be talking to strangers for the rest of your life. I think she was a, a, a brilliant mother. Um, you know, William and Harry certainly had a great time. Ken Wharf was Diana's personal bodyguard and saw how Diana bucked royal tradition when it came to their schooling. There's just no way that Diana wanted them to go to a boarding school. When I was working with William and Harry for the first four months, Diana would take them to school every single morning and would always be there in the afternoon. Now with children of their own, William and Harry have lived more than half their lives without their mother. But Paul says who they are now is a direct result of how Diana raised them. She brought those boys up and instilled in them her ideals, her dreams, and her hopes. And what you see today is a product of Diana. She did that. She made those boys.